The first iteration of my own rooftop solar that I DIY'd about a year ago, I used a grid tie inverter. It's technically a hybrid, but it was a high voltage battery and I couldn't really use it. And now I'm looking at doing a hybrid inverter instead. And I wanted to go through the different types of inverters and why I decided on a hybrid over an all in one. So if we start with my house, this is essentially how I have mine set up. I have strings of solar panels and they're the high voltage, but you know, still about 10 amps coming into my string inverter. And yes, in this example, it's about 2000 watts. I have six kilowatt inverters. And then from there to an AC disconnect that's right near the utility meter. And in, in my area, the utility requires it to be like within 10 feet of the meter and it must be visible from where the meter is at so that they can come and switch it off if need be, such as an emergency. The electricity is always flowing from the string inverter, from this grid tie string inverter, into the electrical panel. So you'll see with a 2000 watt inverter, you know, I'm under 10 amps. You just feed it into a 240 volt breaker and everything's fine. If you ever wanted to add another string inverter, you could just do another breaker. It doesn't have to be an upgraded inverter um, that's a larger wattage. You can actually run multiple inverters, just like in micro inverters, where you have multiple inverters and it's just that they're smaller inverters made to typically mount behind the panel itself. And so each panel has a DC connection up to the microinverter. And then you've got a trunk cable that kind of plugs in just like an extension cord that runs all the microinverters together back to the AC disconnect switch and into the electrical panel. So you might have a 20 amp breaker here that can support 13 microinverters all on one trunk line, you know, and that would get you under the 20 amps. And then if you wanted to add another line of panels, you just do another 240 volt breaker and another, you know, 13 panels or 10 panels or whatever. And uh, the, the big advantage to microinverters is that if this panel here is shaded, none of the other panels care because the microinverters are, are taking care of that DC to AC conversion and it's only caring about the one panel that's connected to it as opposed to grid tie inverters, where when you shade one panel in the string, it's gonna affect the whole string. And that's one of the reasons that microinverters have been so prevalent is that uh, in partial shading or a chimney's gonna come across the panels or something like that, it just makes it really easy to design a system and just put microinverters and be done with it. Same with uh, the string inverters, the electricity is always flowing from the microinverters into the electrical panel. And that brings us into hybrid inverters. So in this case, the hybrid inverter is more like the string inverter than it is like the micro inverters because you've got one, uh, a long string of panels here that are feeding into the hybrid inverter. And just like a grid tie uh, string inverter, it can just feed power straight out to the grid or to your AC electrical panel to be used at the house. But you'll notice here that this arrow for flow is actually both directions. So while you can feed out to the grid, you can also pull power in. Well, why would you want to pull power in? That's because you have a critical loads panel. And that's something that's new with this hybrid inverter over the grid tie string inverter, is that you can have uh, loads, a panel, that can be run off of just battery and panels, as opposed to requiring the grid to be on. When you're in a pure grid tie scenario, your electricity flowing only one direction, as soon as this AC disconnect switch is tripped or the breaker is turned off or there is no grid anymore, this grid tie inverter will shut down. That's according to UL1741, an anti-islanding feature, and that's safety for those that are working on the grid and whatnot. Um, it's absolutely necessary and required for this type of a setup. But the way that the hybrid inverter works is you have a separate output that will go to this critical loads panel. So in normal day-to-day -day operation, you're either pulling power from the, the grid, such as at night when there's no solar, or you're pulling power from the solar panels to feed the critical loads. And then if you ever do lose the grid or the AC disconnect switch is off, then you still have panels and battery to feed the critical loads. So grid down scenario, you can still run some stuff off of there. So obviously the battery can be charged and discharged, hence the arrow pointing both directions. You can actually charge the battery from the grid or from the panels um, in this case. So hybrid inverter, very flexible, but usually two to three times the cost of a grid tie string inverter. So all-in-one inverters is, is, is like what you would see with a GrowWatt or an MPP Solar. 
And the big difference here between an all-in-one inverter and a hybrid inverter is that this here is only one direction. The electricity flows from the AC electrical panel, from the grid, into the all-in-one. This, according to the electrical panel, this is an appliance, right? Sometimes it uses power, sometimes it doesn't. And typically they're configured where the battery and the panels are gonna run your critical loads or your off-grid stuff as much as possible. And then if there's not enough power, the battery voltage is too low, the automatic transfer switch that's built into the all-in-one inverter will trip and you'll then be in bypass mode and pull power from the AC electrical panel into the all-in-one inverter in order to feed the critical loads. Typically in that situation, you can also charge the battery at the same time because there's an AC battery charger built in. So that's with an all-in-one inverter. And if you think about this, if you put all of your loads as critical loads and the AC electrical panel was really just the grid itself, then an all-in-one inverter in, in a self-consumption environment where you don't want to backfeed the grid is just as good as a hybrid inverter. The difference is with a hybrid inverter, you don't have to have an inverter here that can support, say, your electric oven and your air conditioner and all the and your, and your EV and all that that uh, require a lot of watts at once. So if you have a 10 kilowatt inverter, but your oven takes 5,000 watts and your dryer takes 5,000 watts, if you had all of those on the critical loads panel, then you probably have problems trying to run them. But if you had an all-in-one inverter and you had enough of them to where your max load is 20,000 watts, say, and you have 26,000 watts worth of all-in-one inverter here, you could just have everything at the critical loads panel and just use this as a, a worst case scenario and that your, your panels haven't gotten charged in a day or two and you need to be able to pull from the grid. Uh, but this one's more flexible and you don't have to go all out. So you could say have a five or 10 kilowatt inverter instead of having to have a 25 kilowatt to be able to uh, offset what's here on this electrical panel. So with this, I'm calling it the off-grid inverter and it's like the dedicated inverter. All the other options had the grid involved and you don't have to have the grid involved for an all-in-one, right? You could, you could just have a generator here or nothing at all. You know, you don't have to have the grid for a hybrid inverter, but it's kind of the point of a hybrid is to be able to interact with the grid. With an off-grid inverter, you have solar panels feeding into a charge controller, which charges the battery. And then the battery is discharged by the inverter to power your loads. It's all very, very simple. Um, and everything's just based off of voltage for the battery. Charge controller is gonna try and keep it right at full charge voltage. The inverter is going to pull off of it as it needs. So if it reaches full voltage, then the charge controller will back off. You'll see the open circuit voltage, uh, or the, the panels will start reaching open circuit voltage as, as the charge backs off because the battery is full and your critical loads or your loads at all aren't pulling that much wattage. So this is just a super simple version um, on paper, right? Because it's all in one line. But when you go to wire things up, it's really nice to have an all-in-one inverter because you only have one connection down to the battery, your positive and negative leads, and your one connection down to the panels, your positive and negative leads, and then out to your loads, and then generator or grid as needed. But it all goes through this one all-in-one inverter and it makes things really simple. So in my scenario, I really wanted to do a hybrid inverter. Um, even when I first put in my string grid tie inverter, um, but I didn't have the resources to go buy a bunch of batteries. And I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get grid tie in. I can always change later. And I was able to, because the deal is, I installed an array at about 250, 200, and maybe 300 volts. Or I have five and six panels in series, which is a fairly low voltage, um, all things considered. Usually you'd run these probably 10, 11 in series. But I'm able now to buy a hybrid inverter they can support the same voltages and current of panels. And so I'll be able to just rip out my old string inverter and plop in a hybrid inverter and use the same panels in the same configuration for my hybrid inverter. But of course, what I get then is the ability to drop a battery in there and to have a critical loads panel. Right now, my big thing is I'd like to be able to supply power from panels or battery out to my main electrical panel. Right now, I'm exporting a lot of power to the grid that I don't get paid back for. So during the day, if I give something, if I give power to the grid that I'm not using myself, then I don't get anything back for it. And so what I'd like to do, and, and the hybrid inverter that I chose can do this, 
is it will have a consumption meter right here going out to the grid. And I will know how much power I'm pulling from the grid or giving to the grid. So during the day, I can have a battery that's charged with my excess solar and then say the dryer kicks on and suddenly I start pulling from the grid, well, it can pull from the battery and from the panels and push out to this electrical panel to try and zero out how much power I'm pulling from the grid. And I might be discharging my battery a little bit while I'm doing that, but as soon as the dryer turns back off, well, I might have two or 3,000 watts of power available. And instead of pushing that power out to the grid, what I'm gonna do is continue zeroing this out and I might have two or 3,000 watts flowing into the battery. That way the next time the dryer kicks back on, I'll be able to push it back out to the electrical panel. And the critical loads would be, of course, nice because I could create a new panel that has, say, a circuit in a bedroom or two for a window air conditioner or even the whole downstairs um, uh, heat pump that would be able to cool the downstairs and, and choose some loads over here so that we can cook some things and keep cool or, or warm. Uh, depending on the season. All right, so I did have to go decide on a hybrid inverter for myself, and I landed on the Mega Revo. It's very cost effective, and I'll find out if there's a reason for that. Um, but you can see here a whole lot of inputs, outputs. You know, you got four strings of PV inputs, four different MPPT trackers uh, for a total of 12 kilowatts that it can support. You can do your generator, your grid inputs, your load two as opposed to your load one. So one of these loads you can actually have drop off at a certain voltage, um, whereas the other one continues on, like if you have a critical loads and then you have like a water heater or something. So very cool. Uh, and they're supposed to be able to expand. So if this, so like the one I've got is an 8,000 watt and later on I can add another 8,000 watt if I want, but it takes in 12,000 watts worth of solar. It can provide 8,000 watts of backup power. Um, and this will feed the grid if I want it to. This will do self-consumption. This will charge batteries at 190 amps. So very cool. And of course I have the split phase model, which um, I need for here in America because you know we're a little bit weird and don't have the straight 240. So we'll see how it works for me.